have been uh, looking at jitter generation and one of the components of jitter generation is the phase noise of the VCO. Okay. So, we will spend some time looking at uh, what the phase noise of a VCO looks like. Again, I would not go into too much detail of uh, deriving the actual phase noise of the VCO, but we will show you how uh, the frequency dependence is right. There is a certain kind of spectrum that you get for the phase of the VCO because of noise and basically uh, that seems to be common to ev every VCO, every kind of VCO that you build. So, that is what we will look at. Okay. Now, we have different types of uh, VCOs of course, without going into topological differences the main uh, types that we use are what are known as a ring oscillator which consists of a certain number of inverters in a feedback loop. Okay. If you use single unit inverters, you have to use an odd number of inverters. The easiest way to think about it is the whole thing is a logical inversion with a delay. Okay. So, if this uh, changes from 0 to 1, this changes from 1 to 0 after some time. So, that change goes back through this and then uh, that 1 to 0 change will produce a 0 to 1 change after some time. So, this thing keeps happening and you will get some oscillation right and if the number of inverters is n and the delay of in which inverter is T d, the period of uh, oscillation is 2 n times T d. Okay. Now, there are many uh, variants here, the actual inverter itself can be the regular CMOS inverter it can be the current starved inverter, you can have differential structures, you can have a differential pair as the amplifier and so on. Okay. There are lots of possibilities there, we would not get into uh, those details right now. Then there is another type of uh, oscillator which uses an inductor okay, to make a resonant circuit. This uh, R p denotes the loss of the resonant circuit, you do not actually put a resistor but it will be there anyway because of the loss in the inductor and in the capacitor. Now, this if there was no loss then it would have a solution which is a sinusoid which stays forever right L and C energy keeps exchanging between L and C and the sinusoid uh, will persist forever because of R p it will die out, but you can fix it by having this symbol here denotes a voltage controlled current source. Okay. So, let us say I call this V i and I have a plus sign here and I look at I o basically this is equivalent to V i and some g m times V i in that direction. Okay. If I have a minus sign here it will draw current into it. Okay. So, this is a transconductor or a voltage controlled current source and you enclose it in a feedback loop like that. Now, you know that if you take a voltage control current source and connect the controlling voltage to the output between these terminals what do you see? What, what do you see between those two terminals? What kind of an element is that? It is if you apply let us say some V x a current g m times v x actually comes out in the opposite direction to a resistor. So, this actually is a negative resistance of value minus 1 by g m okay. and if neg this negative conductance happens to be more than our, uh, the conductance corresponding to the loss, then this will oscillate and there will be a sustained oscillation okay. and this type of an oscillator is known as an L C oscillator okay. and here the period or the frequency is determined by the resonance frequency of the L C network. Okay. Uh, these are the two commonly used oscillators at high frequencies. Now, 
the advantage of the LC oscillator is that it has lower noise. We do not even know what the oscillator's noise is, but I will just tell you that this has lower noise, okay. But the disadvantage is, is that on a chip it occupies a large area, okay, because you have to use a physical inductor, a coil, okay, that occupies a large area. And the other disadvantage is that it is typically not tunable over a very wide range, okay. Whereas, the ring oscillator the advantage the main advantage is that it is very compact, because it does not have inductors it has only transistors inverter stages it can be made very compact, but the main disadvantage is that it is very noisy. Okay. We will see later that its phase noise will be probably 100 times worse than that of uh, the LC oscillator for the same power consumption. Okay. And typically, this also can be very widely tunable. Okay, so these are the advantages of a of a ring oscillator, right? But regardless of uh, which type of oscillator it is, the phase noise uh, dependence of phase noise on frequency it turns out to be the same. Okay. So we will just look at the dependence, and then I'll give you some. Uh, key results regarding the phase noise. Okay. Now, typically the phase noise is explained in the frequency domain using this, but I think actually it is more intuitive to simply look at what happens to the phase in the time domain using the ring oscillator. Okay. First, let me I will draw three stages, this can be any odd number of stages this by itself is a delay line with an inversion right. So, if V i let us not worry about how it starts up, but let us say that if V i is like that then V o would be V o would have the opposite transition but after some time right. So, this delay here I will call this entire thing I earlier called it T d. So, let me just call it T naught or something ok. This whole thing is the delay of the delay line T naught ok. Now, if we like I said if we feed it back here obviously, V i is the same as V o right. This rising edge of V i induces a falling edge here and that falling edge if you think of that as V i it would induce a rising edge T d seconds later. So, it will keep doing that right. And the period here is 2 times T naught. Okay. <coughs> right. And this whole thing can be thought of as basically a delay of T naught followed by a comparator which has an inversion that is for positive voltages it goes to negative saturation and for negative voltages it goes to positive saturation. We can think of it like that. Okay. approximately like right. Now, as you can see if uh, everything is ideal this uh, waveform is periodic with a period 2 times T naught, where T naught is the delay of the entire delay line. Okay. Now, what happens in reality? In reality, right, 
first of all uh, let me modify this slightly so that it is uh, clearer or it is easier to understand. I will draw this with uh, finite slopes okay, instead of uh, infinite slope. So, this is T naught and the full period is 2 times T naught. Okay. In fact, this is what the waveform typically looks like also, it does not have infinite slopes. Okay. Now, I have drawn the comparator like this, just imagine that the output of the comparator has this slew rate right as a certain finite slope. Now, in reality what happens? this delay line or the comparator the entire thing will have some noise okay because it's made of transistors or any components maybe transistors and resistors it will have some noise and let's assume that it can be referred by the entire noise can be referred to the input as an input referred noise vn okay so what happens in that case so let's say the waveform here is something like this. Okay. Now, some noise gets added to it right. Now, the waveform here is exactly the same thing delayed by T naught. Okay. So, by the way uh, let me show it like this. The waveform at the input let us say is this ideal ramp okay. and then the waveform here after adding noise would be something like that. It will have some wiggles around it. Okay. I have shown it only on one side, but uh, you get the idea. Okay. This uh, noise will make it do something like that. Okay. Now, the waveform here at this point will be exactly the same, but delayed by T naught. Okay. Now, when will this comparator switch? when this crosses a certain threshold. So, let us say this is the comparator threshold. Okay. Now, you can see that without noise it was switching over there and with noise, noise will change the point at which noise will change the time instant at which the, uh, the comparator input crosses the threshold. So, it will also shift the time of the next transition right. Like for instance, the output here ideally would have been something like that and in reality it will get shifted and it will be something like this. Okay. Is this clear? So, First, let me assume the initial edge to be ideal, meaning this is an oscillator, right? There is no other time reference. I will define the time of the first transition as t equal to 0. Okay? Now, some noise gets added to it. So, what happens is maybe the next one will move out by a certain amount. Okay? And how much will it move by? What is the amount of movement? If you look at this model, can you tell? Roughly speaking, what is the amount of movement? Now, let us just call the noise itself as V n. Let us say we know the value of the noise V n. So, then how much will the transition move in the horizontal direction? Roughly, I mean you may call these small approximations, right? Usually. V n divided by the slope. Okay. So, we have to, so the slope of this is something, let me call that s, I mean this is the magnitude of the slope and then now the ideal transition should have been here. Okay. So, now I will assume that some slowly varying noise gets added to it. Okay. 
So, then what happens the transition moves to the right is not it. So, what happens is at this instant at the ideal transition there is some noise added okay. and if we assume the noise to be constant in the whole period this horizontal movement will be nothing but this vertical movement divided by the slope is it okay. So, this uh, the transition moves by the noise at that instant noise at the ideal instant of the transition divided by the slope of this waveform is this fine. You have to imagine that in that small amount of time the noise is roughly constant that is okay. that is not a bad assumption that is a reasonable assumption because the shift is also quite small is this okay. So, what happens is that so T naught is the half period right ideally this transition the first uh, transition is at 0 the next one is at uh, T naught this is at 0 this is at T naught this is at 2 T naught 3 T naught 4 T naught and so on at every integer multiple of T naught there is a transition and the alternate ones are in opposite polarity right once it will be rising next it will be falling and so on ok. Now, <coughs> what happens is that at each uh, time instant right. So, again we will assume that there is some shift, but we will assume that the noise itself does not change so much by the time instant ok because what we want to do is we have to add these two waveforms and find out when it goes to 0. So, that is a difficult thing to do. So, what we will do is we look at the value of the noise at the instant of the ideal transition ok. So, that is actually a vertical movement is not it noise gets added. So, the waveform moves up or down we will say that the noise does not change too much in that small time period. So, that vertical movement divided by the slope is the horizontal movement ok. So, the first transition it will move by V n at T naught divided by the slope compared to the ideal right this is ok. Now, because the first transition has moved what comes out after the delay will also move by the same amount ok even without the noise is not it. Let us say that first uh, I mean imagine this uh, weird situation where only at this instant there is noise what will happen then the transition will move and all the other following transitions will have moved by the same amount ok. Is this clear because each transition is produced by the previous transition. So, if a particular transition moves it will move all the following transitions also is this fine. Now, of course, it is not as though noise is added only at this instant. So, it will also get added at this instant. So, how much will be the actual movement for the second one? How much will be the? Huh? Not necessarily twice this noise is a different the noise at different instants are different ok. So, what is it? I will define that the first transition is t equal to 0. It should have been at t naught, but it will be plus v n of t naught divided by s ok. Then what will it be ideally what should it when should it have been? 2 t naught ok plus uh, there will be first of all whatever the first one was uh, this, uh, whatever this shift is that will appear as it is ok. And then yeah so it is in the opposite direction, but this does not matter because this noise is a random this one v n of sorry this is capital t naught 
V n of 2 t naught divided by s. Okay. Similarly, fourth transition is at 3 t naught plus V n of t naught divided by s minus V n of uh, 2 t naught divided by s. This minus is simply because the slope is changing direction, but that does not matter because V n itself happens to be white noise. So, that does not matter. Okay. So, what you see is an accumulation of noise right. The first one will move by certain amount, the second one will move by the sum of the previous two, the next one will move by the sum of the three movements and so on, because there is no other time reference here right. Each transition generates the following one. So, if you move one it will move everything else okay. and the next one will move by a further amount because of noise at that instant. So, that will move everything else by even more and so on. Okay. Oh, minus is because I assume that V n gets added. Okay. So, now uh, if V n gets added to a positive slope, let us say I uh, will just show a positive V n. If a positive V n gets added to a positive slope, it will move to the left side. Okay. The transition will move to the left side maybe I should reverse the signs of that, but uh, and then if the same positive V n gets added to a negative slope, the transition will move to the right side. Okay. Is this fine? So, in fact, maybe yeah. So, what I said was, so the second one is a negative slope. Okay. So, this movement is V n of T naught divided by S. Next one is a positive slope. So, the movement due to that noise is minus V n of 2 T naught divided by S, but you also have the movement due to the first edge and so on. Okay. Because the slope is reversing every time, this is what happens. Okay. Now, uh, it turns out that this V n, basically this is the input referred noise of the delay line or the amplifier, whatever you want to call it. Okay. So, now that turns out to be white. Okay. That is a very reasonable assumption. right? So, you make a delay line or you make an amplifier or a limiter and then you put it in feedback that is how you make a ring oscillator and the input referred noise can be reasonably modeled as white noise. Meaning, this V n of uh, V n at this instant is uncorrelated with V n at every other instant and so on. Is this okay? So, V n happens to be white. whatever you want to call this amplifier or a delay line or a comparator. Now, deriving the variance of V n involves some work. It is not very difficult, but you have to model the inverter in some way and you can do that, but let us not worry about that. Let us assume that we know the input referred noise of the amplifier. It happens to be white. Okay. Is this fine? And then we are taking samples of V n. every t naught seconds. Okay. T naught is the uh, interval at which we are sampling it okay. and we also know that the oscillation frequency is 1 over 2 times t naught. Okay. So, if V n is white, so I did not say that. So, this is uh, V n can be modeled as white noise. White means its uh, values at different instants are uncorrelated. Okay. So, this is like coin toss right. Every coin toss is independent of other coin tosses. So, similarly the V n value at every transition is independent of the values at all the other transitions okay. and it has a variance I will call it sigma V n square. Okay. It will be as usual a Gaussian distributed noise and its uh, mean square value will be sigma V n square. Okay. Is this fine? 
and again we are looking at the samples of V n right. So, let us say we look at uh, V n of k t naught. Okay. So, if we look at the samples of V n, we have a sample noise process, what will be the variance of this, what will be the variance of the samples? Same thing right, also sigma V n square, the variance I mean if you sample it the variance does not change. Okay. So, what will be the spectral density of uh, uh, sampled V n? The samples are still uncorrelated from each other. So, what will be the nature of the spectral density? It will be still wide, it will be constant at all frequencies, but remember this is sampled. So, the frequencies extend up to what? I mean, when you have a sample process, what is the maximum frequency? Half the sampling rate. Okay. So, here the sampling rate for noise is uh, 1 by t naught okay, and half of that is 1 by 2 t naught. Okay. In fact, this is equal to the oscillation frequency itself. Right. So, and we know that because it is white, it is constant. Right. And how much is it? What is the value of the constant? How do you decide? Uh, basically, the area of this, right, like I said, if you have a continuous time noise, right, integral from 0 to infinity or uh, Sx of f dF, this is the variance okay we have discrete time noise that is sampled noise this integral is carried from 0 to fs by 2 where this is sampled at fs okay so then this will be that is it okay So, it says exactly the same thing you have to integrate over all frequencies, but when you have a sample signal all frequencies simply refers to frequencies between 0 and f s by 2 that is all. This is okay. and again we are talking about one sided spectral densities here right. So, these are one sided spectral density. Okay. This is fine. So, the area under this is equal to sigma v n square. So, <coughs> the spectral density value is sigma v n square divided by this frequency it is that is it okay? some value it does not matter actually what matters to us is that it is white because we do not know what uh, sigma v n square is. Is this okay? Your question? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you have white noise, if you have pure white noise, right, uh, which extends all the way from 0 to infinity, then its variance is infinity, that is correct. Okay. So, you have to have band limiting somewhere in the circuit for you to have finite variance. Of course, this white noise is a model, it does not quite exist like that. Even when we say a resistor's noise is white, it is not quite white because uh, what happens is the electrons move between fixed uh, atoms in the lattice. So, if you look at that short time scale, uh, basically the mean free time between collisions, that will be of the order of uh, I do not know femtosecond or I do not know what, I mean some very short time. So, if you start looking at frequencies, which is the reciprocal of that which comes to like terahertz or something I do not remember what that is. So, then it is actually not white the frequency I mean 
if you look at the noise spectral density it does go down. But the white noise model is ok for us because we are interested in everything in our circuit will be uh, band limited to much lower frequencies ok. But if you have true white noise a constant spectral density from uh, 0 to infinity then its variance is infinity there is no question ok. And if you sample that you do get infinite variance right and this makes sense what happens when you sample. So, let us say you have a continuous time noise and it is very it is uh, spectral density is constant at all frequencies. So, what happens when you sample? So, everything folds right I mean this thing folds back there that thing folds back there and so on. So, you have infinite number of such pieces and everything folds back you do get an infinite spectral density ok. So, you will get infinite spectral density even in the sample noise if it is truly white ok. But uh, let us say it gets limited to some value there then what happens is that these pieces will get folded ok. So, the spectral density of the discrete one will look like it is more than the continuous time one, but they will have the same variance ok. Because you can see in continuous time you have all these areas spread out like that in discrete time case they will all be on top of each other, but the total area will be exactly the same ok. So, this has some uh, white noise up to uh, f s by 2. Now, if you look at the time shift that is these are the ideal transition times ok and these are the shifts in time. The first one is shifted by v n of t naught, the second one is shifted by v n of t naught minus v n of 2 t naught and so on ok. Is this fine? So, the time shift is nothing but phase noise right. Basically, you have the ideal periodic signal compared to that these things will be shifted because of noise. Those shifts are basically phase noise. In this particular case, these shifts have units of time ok, but you can multiply this by 2 pi divided by the period which is 2 times t naught and get the same thing in terms of phase ok. So, this is a time shift of uh, the 0 crossings the transitions, but you can get the phase shift by simply scaling it by 2 pi by the period of oscillation ok. So, it is the same thing. So, now uh, what is phase noise? Phase noise is basically the spectral density of uh, phase noise is basically uh, phase noise refers to these shifts in the uh, transition instance ok. or you could call it 0 crossing instance compared to an ideal periodic signal ok. In other words like uh, I think earlier I talked about the phase of a phase of an ideal periodic signal with time what does that look like? phase of an ideal periodic signal with time it is linear right. So, it will be a ramp and its slope will be 2 pi times the oscillation frequency for an oscillator. Now, what does this phase noise do? Basically, it is like wiggles around this one right. So, what happens is every period basically when is when do you have a period whenever theta crosses 2 pi 4 pi, 6 pi and so on integer multiples of uh, uh, 2 pi ok. Now, if this was perfectly linear then the time at which it crosses 2 pi will also be equally spaced, but because of these wiggles that will not be equally spaced there will be some shift there will be some random shift depending on noise 
the amount of shift that you have is the phase noise ok. It is basically the difference between this uh, red curve and the purple curve that is phase noise ok. Right. So, uh, I mean we are already familiar with this we have done some calculations with this right. Uh, in that we have a phase model of the CDR. What I said was that model gives you the deviations from the ideal uh, zero crossings or ideal phase of a periodic signal right. So, the output of a CDR is a clock and its zero crossings are supposed to be periodic, but we have already seen that it will not be periodic for various reasons either you can have input jitter or uh, uh, you have resistors noise. So, the what we calculate as phase of the VCO output in the phase model of the CDR that is basically that denotes the deviations from uh, zero crossings uh, the deviation from instance of zero crossings compared to an ideal periodic signal right and this is exactly the same thing the VCO by itself will have such deviations that is what this is saying just like a resistor it should have a current uh, VYR, but if you measure the actual current it will be fluctuating around it. Similarly, a VCO ideally should have equally spaced uh, zero crossings equal equal uh, width periods, but the periods will be of unequal width because of its own noise ok. Is this fine? So, now we want to find out what the spectrum of this deviations are deviations is right. Uh, we now have I mean I will show the zero crossings. zero crossings there are two zero crossings in each cycle of oscillation right. So, one is at 0 next is at t naught 2 t naught this whole thing is one period ok. At both zero crossings you can measure the phase if you want to. The actual zero crossings are this by definition is 0 ok. That is I start the oscillator and I imagine that I have started an ideal oscillator with the same first uh, instant ok. So, this will be T naught plus some T 1 uh, this will be 2 T naught plus maybe I will call this uh, tau 1 tau 2 this is 3 T naught plus tau 3 and so on ok. right or uh, so the deviation is here by definition at 0 tau 1 tau 2 tau 3 tau 4 and in terms of phase it will be 0 tau 1 times 2 pi by 2 t naught tau 2 times 2 pi by 2 t naught and so on. It is common to express it in terms of phase. So, that is why I am showing this it is the same thing scaled that is all ok. Okay. So, if I plot the spectrum of uh, this sequence this is also a discrete time signal right. So, at every uh, t naught you have some value this itself is a sample signal the deviations are themselves uh, considered as a sample signal right. You have some deviation at the first edge and then something else at the second edge and so on. So, what will the spectral density of this look like? You understand the question. So, you uh, make an actual oscillator the uh, time of the zero crossings will differ from the ideal zero crossings by some amount. What is that amount? You have the sequence here tau 1, tau 2, tau 3, tau 4 and so on and you plot the spectral density of this sequence. What do you think that will look like? Huh? It will not be white what will it be? Increasing with frequency why? Yeah that is true. So, Huh? 
sorry what is that? No, no, it will get shifted that is what the amount of shift is tau 1, tau 2, tau 3, tau 4. So, what will be the spectral density of this? What will it look like in the frequency domain? Well, I mean he said it is not white meaning tau 1 and tau 2 are not uncorrelated right. No, no, no uh, ok let us not worry about that let us not worry about such large deviations ok. The deviations are very small compared to the clock period ok. Although we say that uh, it is Gaussian distributed do not worry about the case Gaussian does go to infinity on both sides, but do not worry about those small care like probability where it goes beyond the next edge that thing is too difficult to consider, but uh, let us assume very small deviations. So, each edge gets shifted yeah. So, the easy way to look at it is what did we say? So, we said uh, tau 1 s V n of t naught divided by s right tau 2 is V n of t naught divided by s minus V n of uh, 2 t naught divided by s tau 3 is okay and so on. So, give me an expression for what is that the first difference of uh, the tau's what is that what is that v n of k t naught by s and maybe there is a minus 1 to the k plus 1 or something. Now, this is not important because this v n is white right. So, if you multiply it by let us say alternately plus and minus 1 it will still be white you understand this right because you have a sequence of v n's each one is correlated only with itself nothing else. Now, you invert all the others it will still be uncorrelated it does not matter. So, actually this whole thing if you call it uh, v n prime of k t naught ok this will still be white and it will have exactly the same spectral density because we have, we have not changed the magnitude of noise ok. Same p s d as v n of k t naught ok that will still be white ok you understand. So, the first difference of the deviations it is white by the way what is the first difference tau k minus tau k minus 1 it is the width of the kth period right. So, what it says is each period changes by some amount which is independent from all the other periods ok. So, the change in each period is uncorrelated, but if you look at a particular 0 crossing it consists of deviations of all the periods that come before it ok. So, that will not be uncorrelated from 1 to the next one because uh, the deviation at the of the kth 0 crossing will also have the effect of all the k minus 1 deviations ok. So, this tau k minus tau k minus 1 which is v n prime of uh, k t naught divided by s this you can see basically this is the width of kth this is not the width of kth period sorry this is the the width of kth period is uh, k t naught let me not get into this uh, period jitter business I will come to that later because uh, this t naught is the half period it is not the full period, but uh, you get the idea. So, maybe I will call this width of uh, kth half period what is it? It is basically k t naught plus tau k minus k minus 1 times t naught plus tau k minus 1 right. This is the kth 0 crossing this is the k minus 1 0 crossing the difference between them is the kth this is ok it is the kth half period. So, this is equal to 
t naught plus tau k minus tau k minus 1. Okay. So, this I earlier wrongly said it this is not the kth half period it is the deviation in the kth half period from the ideal value right all half period should be equal to t naught. Okay. But this uh, each half period is changed by tau k minus tau k minus 1. Okay. So, this is nothing but kth half period jitter. Okay. Maybe this treatment became complicated because I took half the period, but this is still correct. Okay. We can still consider only alternate samples and consider the full period all the results will be exactly the same. Okay. So, this each half period is uncorrelated the width of each half period is uncorrelated from all the other half periods that kind of makes sense because it only depends on one particular noise sample right. So, this is uncorrelated or white okay. and then a whole bunch of them get accumulated to give you the 0 crossing that thing will be correlated. Now, how do you find the spectral density of that? So, this if I transform this into the frequency domain what do I get? I mean this is a discrete time uh, signal right this is equal to where this refers to the uh, z transform of the samples of v n divided by s that is all. Okay. So, the total deviation which is referred uh, which is uh, denoted by tau is v n prime of z divided by s 1 minus z inverse. Okay. If you think of it as a discrete time signal that is if you relate the samples of tau to samples of noise this is the relationship and you can see that it is an integration right this 1 by 1 minus z inverse it is accumulation or integration. Okay. So, what kind of uh, spectral density will we get? Basically it is uh, very high at low frequencies and then goes down right I mean integration in terms of s in, in the s domain what is it 1 by 1 minus z inverse is integration or accumulation in the z transform domain in the laplace transform domain what is integration what is integration 1 by s right 1 by s so it's just a spectral density that is inversely proportional to frequency that's all okay is this fine so maybe this was a little bit abstract and confusing but we'll continue with this uh, this is just to give you an idea of what the phase noise of an oscillator looks like. Okay. Basically, the point is you have a essentially every oscillator can be thought of as a delay line, right? When feedback around itself. Now, the transitions will move because of noise, okay? And also, there is no other reference, so each transition creates the following transition. So, the movement of every transition affects all the following transitions. Okay. The movement of each transition itself may be uncorrelated with all the other transitions. If the noise is white that is true each transition moves by a certain amount okay. uh, that is uncorrelated with other times, but uh, because of this accumulation the total deviation compared to the ideal periodic signal that will be correlated. Okay. So, we will calculate the spectral density and see. Please think about this. This is one way of uh, thinking of the phase noise of an oscillator. The phase noise of every oscillator has this uh, uh, 1 over f square type of behavior. Okay. So, that is because of this because of accumulation there is no other referencing right. So, each uh, edge moves all the following edges that is why you have this problem. Okay. Please think about this we will continue from here.